Let's talk about the uh, midterms in 2022, the red wave that never was, more like a red trickle. And many at the time blamed then or former President Trump rather for that. Does any of the blame belong to Ronna McDaniel? I don't think so. They raised a lot of money that year. And the, the, the RNC doesn't really do television ads. They do more of ground games. And they were very successful at getting the grassroots active in those elections, especially in the battleground states. The other thing that, that Ronald was very successful at is election integrity. She put in place a permanent election integrity department that has challenged um, in, in the court of law. They have 77 lawsuits in 23 different states with more to come. Um, so she really took that seriously. That was something that was important to President Trump. It was something that was important to the party. So I, I think that her focus on making sure that elections are happening in, in the way that they're supposed to lawfully, and also making sure that our ground game was strong and equal to that of the Democrats, those were her primary responsibilities, and, and those were successful. So um, the, the, the 2022 ripple effect that you had, I think, had way more to do with the issue set and most the issue set that caused um, so many of these important races to lose was abortion. And what do you make of the timing? Because reports are saying it's later this month. Later this month obviously means February and Super Tuesday is March. So this means before Super Tuesday. What do you make of that? I, I believe, and I don't know this, but I believe that the the timing of her departure is going to be sometime after um, after uh, South Carolina, and it's going to be a smooth transition. And I think that the reason that it's happening then, or that the President Trump wants it to happen then, is because he believes that he's going to shore up the nomination by then. And so he's going to going to need to have um, the person that he wants in place by the time that that really he is the nominee that has the most delegates or presumed to have the most delegates. So I think that the timing is just really after South Carolina, where the president believes that he's going to be very safe in the number of delegates that he has. Let's talk about possible replacements. I know you said compared this to a knife fight in a phone booth. Someone that's been floated is former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Uh, Congressman Matt Gates, who really led the charge on his ouster as Speaker, even endorsed him on X. What do you make of that possible replacement? Well, I don't think that it's going to be McCarthy. I think it was fun for everybody to talk about it, and and it was fun for Matt Gates to tweet <laughs> to tweet that ab about um, you know somebody who he 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 clearly has gone against um, recently. But I, I believe that it's going to be somebody within uh, the the RNC, somebody within the 168 members. That the name that I have heard floated is Michael Waitley. Um, he is somebody that is both close to. Ronna McDaniel, but also close to President Trump. And that's why I think it's going to be a smooth transition and there, there won't be a knife fight in the phone booth this time.